Hey everyone, welcome back to another how-to video. I'm your host, Rat Dog, and today we are going to be talking about electricity, the do's and don'ts of working with it, how to hook everything up, and basically stuff like that. So let's get started. So we have, there's three different means of producing electricity. You have the generator bank, which is used with engines. Each engine in there will give you 50 watts of power. And it'll it'll show it right up here. And when you turn it on, it'll show you how many uh, watts you're actually using. So uh, as you're hooking things up, blade traps and, and electric fences and so forth, it'll show you how much power you're actually using. And you that way you'll know how many engines that you have to put in. So you basically you throw in some engines and refuel it and you have a total of 300 watts. So as you, like right now if I turn it on, it's not going to be using any power. It's not until I hook it up that it actually counts the wattage. So I'm going to turn it off for now. Uh, other one we have is the battery bank. Now the battery bank obviously uses batteries. Now the batteries come in different levels. Unlike the engines, it's just one level. So the lower, or should I say the higher the battery have, has, the more output you'll be able to use. So a level one, you'll be able to use 29 watts of power. But if you use a level six, you get 50 watts of power. So you can mix, mix and match as you go. And we're just going to load all that in there. And same thing, it'll t tell you your your usage. And right now, we will not be using anything. I'm actually going to leave this on to see if it'll drain the batteries. Now, what you can do is if you have one of each, you can connect your generator bank to your battery bank. And that'll help keep your batteries charged. We'll get to more on that later. And then we have the solar bank, which is pretty much more late game than anything. And that uses solar, uh, solar cells. And the same thing with the solar cells. They have uh, different levels on them. And I didn't, I didn't bring them all to show you, but uh, the, max, the max is 300 is 30. So you figure each one is, drops down a little bit. And the same thing here. It'll show you how much power you're using. I'm not going to turn that on now. Um, I do have some stuff already lined up. Uh, another thing that we're going to explain is the switch. We have a switch here that you could use to turn on all your, uh, all your traps. So, you know, before Horde Night, you can flip your switch on, and then you don't have to worry about running in between, into them beforehand and zapping yourself. Now, there's two different relays. There is the electric wire relay, which is how you're going to hook up. That's how you extend your wire. Your wire can only go a certain amount of length before it breaks. So you use uh, wire relays to increase the length of your wires. Uh, there's also a electric timer relay, which is good if you're setting up traps and stuff for Horde Night, especially with these gun tur turrets, you don't want them firing all the time. So instead of having to worry about, you know, flipping the switch on every night or before Horde Night, if you forget once and you, you know, you're screwed. So you set up this tire, this timer relay and you could set the time. So you could start it at like, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Let's go ahead and set it for 22, even though we're not going to we're not going to use it, but you can set it for 22 2200 and have it go off at I would say 5. Because you know, 4 o'clock it's not usually ending at 4 o'clock. So you can set it at 5 or 6. Or whatever, and you just then you don't have to worry about turning it on and off. Okay, so as far as hooking this up, you want to take your wire tool, and now I do have my buttons changed around. I've said that before. So 
it might be different when you have your uh, button set on default but I you know I really didn't mess with these so the buttons really should be the same so you hit L1 you don't hit L1 you hit L2 and that connects it and then you're gonna want to connect it to your switch by hitting L2 again and now your generator bank is connected to your switch now from there you want to take your switch and connect it to your relay if you're using a relay if you're not using a relay then you can connect it directly to whatever uh, whatever traps you're using but for this purpose we're going to connect it to the relay now there's using a fence post there's a, a some do's and don'ts about it so let's go ahead and connect these I said let's connect these so some people make the mistake of they connect the first post and then they connect it using the same power and they'll run it all the way around their property Just like this so we're we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and you can see at the bottom it says five watts. Okay, so now I have that connected all the way around. Now we don't have it turned on yet, so let's turn this on. And you see it's only showing one watt. That one watt is this light switch right here. So if we turn this on, now you'll come back and see it's doing 27 watts. And now these should be live. Ow. See, they're live. Now, the mistake with hooking it up this way is, yeah, they're all working. The mistake with hooking it up this way is, let's say that this fence post gets destroyed. Now, these fence posts are not connected to power. So you just lost your power going all the way around your base. Okay, so how you want to hook it up is you hook up your first one. You take your fence and you bring it to the second pole. And then you take your relay again come on and you run it to this pole and now that pole is separately powered from that pole so you take this one and run it to the next pole so now you're completely covered and if one pole breaks, then you still have this fence that'll still be active. And you do that along around your property. That's the that's the best way to do it that is not going to jeopardize your uh your facility, your base, because if you lose a pole, let's say this pole gets destroyed, this one will still be active. I actually better use a bandage before I kill myself. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and let's use a bandage. Okay, so those are electric fences. Now, for blade traps, same thing. You can run it from your relay to your blade traps. Now, if you're ever using, let's say, you take this and you're trying to go all the way to your other blade trap and it doesn't hook up and then you look and you see your your line is red that means it's too far it won't connect what you do is you can see at the very bottom of the screen right by the number four slot on my toolbar you can see that it's red just back up a little bit until it gets black and then you can still reach it from there. 
So even though you got up close to it and it was red and it wouldn't connect, you could still back up and possibly be able to reach it for it to work. So you're getting probably an extra six feet or so from the blade, from the relay to the blade trap when technically you shouldn't be able to. But it's, I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just the way they're working it. So there's those two. In fact, I'm gonna turn that off now so I don't step it in the blade traps. Now, uh, a couple other things we have going is dart traps. Now there's three different ways of setting up the dart tra trap. You have trip wire, you have pressure plates, and then you can hear it when I step on it, you could hear the plate trigger and the single one. Now, uh, some people tend to get these hooked up wrong, so I'm going to show you the proper way to do them. I'm going to use the battery bank for that, and we will take the battery bank and we'll go to the switch, which let's turn the switch off. We'll connect, we'll get this relay. We'll get this relay. Thank you. And we're going to connect it to the trigger plate. Now it's going to the trigger plate. We go from the trigger plate to the dart trap. You don't want to go dart trap then trigger plate because what you're doing is you're putting power to the dart, dart trap. So it's going to automatically start firing when you turn the power on. This will only fire when you step on the trigger plate. So when you step on the trigger plate, you could hear that going. And as soon as you step off, it'll stop. And that's because I have the power going to the trigger plate and the trigger plate to the dart trap. Oh, I'm thirsty and hungry. Okay, whatever. So, same thing here. Let's grab one here and we're going to do the trip wire. We power the trip wire within just like the fences, take the trip wire to the other trip wire and then the trip wire to the dart trap. So now when somebody walks across it, you can hear it go. It's good to have <clears throat> your electric fence going this way too. So when they hit this, they get stuck on the electric fence and the dart trap will uh, eat them up. Now, in order for the dart trap to work, one, it's got to have darts in it. And two, you must lock the ammo. Without locking the ammo, if you don't lock the ammo, and I walk across this, it's going to fire, but it's not going to fire any darts. So, you need to lock the ammo, and this is going to hurt. And you can hear it shoot. Oh, that doesn't hurt me. Nice. So that's the that's the gist on that one. Okay, so the next two I'm going to describe is the turrets. So let's go ahead and set up the turrets. We're going to set up both of them. Okay, so in order to set the turrets up, you uh, get into it, obviously. Again, you put your ammo in and you lock the ammo. You can set up the camera preview so you could turn it, you know, facing anywhere you want. I could have it facing me if I wanted to. Or you could, for shotguns, it's, it's best to have on top of your base and you put it up there for birds. But for the meantime, I'm just going to set it anywhere. And that used the left joystick to move around. Okay, so now that's set up. Let's hit O to get out of it. Everything's locked up. You could set the targeting. So you could target zombies. You could target strangers. You could target allies. And for some reason, if you have a death wish, you could target yourself. I don't kind of understand why somebody would want to, you know, drive back to their base and 
get shot by their own turret, but you know, to each their own. And now that is set up. And it'll show you it'll show you the the distance and cone of what they'll be able to see. And the same thing with the SMG turret. You uh, put your bullets in there, you lock it, you set up your targeting, and then you set up your camera preview to where you want to aim it at. Now this has a very long, long range, so you might want to be careful on where exactly you're, you're pointing it, but it's just a demonstration right now. And let's go over here and see how much wattage it's using. It's still using 85, so I have two blade traps, um, a couple of fence posts, dart traps, guns, and I'm still only using 85 watts. That's not bad. And you can see how it's used up some of the batteries. So again, you could uh, take your generator or you could take your solar bank because your solar bank works the same way. And you could click on that and click on there and it'll start actually charging your batteries so the solar bank works the same way as everything else you could actually take it and actually use it as a I disconnected it that one uh, the the cords have to be going a certain way so you so like this one was traveling in this direction but that does not work that has got to go from the power source to the fence and then the fence to the other fence you can't have you can see the the blue is traveling that way you can't have the blue traveling in the opposite direction towards the power because that doesn't make any sense the power is going out this is showing you which way the power is which direction it's going so now it should be live oh you know what it would be live if I had it turned on to the fence post directly now it works all right so that's the basics I hope you guys learned something I hope I can help you out in some kind of a way and That'll be it. So until next time, everybody, stay safe and peace out. Step into my domain if you dare. Expect the unexpected. I just don't care. I'll keep you on your toes. Always be Predictable display Laughter, tears, and blood That's my play I'm the supreme bullshit artist No doubt My tongue lashing Cause I prefer rules Seven days to die Is my day shout Mashed in many facades And freely flow Slicing through your pathetic final notes Sympathy's not in my repertoire So you can fall Unpredictable